Good morning, this is Bill from Audi Europa Naples and today I have this R230 Roadster. Uh, this is a 2009 Mercedes-Benz SL550. Uh, this is the facelift version that came out in 2009. Uh, and what generally a facelift is in a Mercedes product is, you know, they take a body style that's, yeah, I call it aging a little bit. It's been out for a little while. They put some new accoutrements and sheet metal on it and run it for another couple years. And uh, this one got a pretty radical facelift. The entire front end on the car is different uh, from the uh, prior R230s and, uh, you know, looks a lot more modern, particularly like those two big humps down uh, either side of the uh, hood. Kind of very interesting design, uh, the odd looking uh, hockey stick looking lights there, uh, but uh, it works. It's all very attractive in this car. And I particularly like the um, uh, intakes on the side of the fender. Uh, they're a variation from earlier R230s and, and they just look nice. I like the little slats in there. They uh, changed the uh, AMG Sport package that this one has, gave it some better looking wheels. I like those five stars. Uh, frankly, it's just a great looking car uh, in every single way and of course it had that updated 5.5 liter uh, engine ton more horsepower than the earlier 500 came out in 07 in the uh, prior non facelifted version but is much much better in this one anyway beautiful uh, black color outside absolutely lovely let's get into the trunk we have a little abbreviated video on this one need a jacket so uh, this has the uh, keyless go which also gives you the sort of manual or uh, sorry automatic trunk raising uh, if you lift up this divider here uh, you get access to your cargo space you can you know fit a set of golf clubs in there or, you know whatever it is you want to take with you there's the original mats uh, all very nice and proper uh, you have to put this thing back down and in place for it to work push this button here and down will come the uh, down will come the trunk have a look under the hood you know I have to say again I am a Mercedes guy but I took in a 640 BMW the other day and I spent a little time driving it and they are direct competitors. And uh, God, I do much prefer the Mercedes. I really, really do. Anyway, 5.5 liters, I want to say 392 horsepower, 300, is that anyway, enough horsepower, a little bit more torque. Uh, it was a big upgrade from uh, the prior 5 liter motor, which had about 300 horsepower, basically what V6s have now. Uh, so, uh, you know, a way better machine with this engine. Uh, you can see the uh, Mercedes battery here. That's the starter battery. Uh, it also has a house battery back in the back. It's, you know, these things are set up a little bit like motorhomes. They've got a battery to run the engine and a battery to run the rest of it. So uh, it does take some of the stress off it and makes the batteries last longer. Uh, this is a nice low mileage southern car so it's never been rusted out everything nice proper I mean, you can see that when you look down there at the alternator and the you know pulleys there's not a hint of surface rust on them uh, this thing has led a very very soft life and is in great shape uh, lovely sinister front end on that car uh, like the little chrome rings around the fog lamp sets it out a bit uh, big pointy front end with the mesh uh, you know grill at the bottom uh, nice looking mesh they use on this uh, updated grill on these cars with of course the uh, star leading the way yeah it's just nice design facelifts aren't always you know sometimes you change for the sake of change it doesn't work I like these smoked pickle fork indicators inside the uh, side view mirrors uh, the silver accents again on the fenders the silver accents on the door handles and uh, again those beautiful looking uh, 18 inch AMG wheels with the badging and look at the size of the I've got absolute lunatics down there that's great having lunatics around uh, but anyway, you can see no rust on the brakes, you know, oh, there go the glasses. Oh, for the love of God. Anyway, everything nice and lovely all around. <laughs> These glasses in my pocket. 
Uh, anyway, as you go around to the back, uh, you can again see this is where it looks much more like the uh, prior R230s. The rear bumper treatment is quite different, uh, very good looking. Uh, you got these square twice pipes at the bottom. You got a little bit of a diffuser down there. Uh, you can see it's got the sensors in the bumper for the Parktronic, redesigned tail lamps. But uh, again, all very much like the earlier versions. The big difference in these cars is at the front. Anyway, let's hop in, see what we got. So I'm gonna fire it up for a minute just to run the top. To do that, foot on the brake, tap that button on top of the shifter. Uh, and here's this big flapper here. And this will run the top back. So we're gonna push back on that. Windows are gonna go down. There the uh, trunk comes up from the reverse. And that uh, aluminum folding hard top goes very neatly back into the trunk. Lovely. And uh, you can see underneath the flapper is the control for the roll bar. So if I press that, that's going to come up. A lot of guys like driving around with this thing up. They say it gives it kind of a nice look. So I'm leave that up for the moment. Turn that off. And I'll show you how the trunk works with that. This thing, by the way, lovely leather wrap to it. Very, very nice. Uh, that will pop up like an airbag in the event of uh, calamity and keep you safe from uh, uh, rollover, you know, head protection stuff. All right, so if I pull this little flapper back there, the trunk opens itself very nicely. Being a keyless go car, it's also going to lift the uh, uh, thing there to give me access. So now I can get into my cargo, put whatever I want back in there, take it out, put this back down, press this guy, down goes the top, and then press this guy and down goes the trunk. So all very nice stuff. Uh, while we're here, you can see they've updated the air scarf on these cars. Uh, look at the headrest on them. That looks like E.T.'s head, actually. But you can see they're way more significant than earlier versions of these cars. And you can actually see the electric fans in there uh, that run to blow uh, warm air on the back of your head on a, you know, cool night. So even if it's 50 degrees outside, you want to run the top down, uh, this car will accommodate you. You put on the heated seats, turn on the heat scarf, and uh, you're going to be pretty comfy. Uh, press this guy and it's going to move the seat forward in such a way as to give you access to your uh, rear little compartments and cargo areas. Uh, in here you got a nice spot for a carton of hand grenades. Uh, over here you've got uh, another spot for some extra ammo clips, whatever you need. You can actually fit, I don't know if you get an infant in here, it might be a little bit small. Uh, it'd have to be a pretty small infant. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you're bringing a little cat or dog with you, just stuff him in there, close it down, he won't bother you. Uh, these seat belts here are for any cargo that you want to lay across the uh, rear package shelf. They clip down there and will keep it from, you know, rolling around or flying forward. Never actually seen anyone use those for anything, but uh, they're there if you need them. Press the back button and back goes the seats. Look at the beautiful red leather in this car. Uh, absolutely gorgeous color combination, I have to say, and very nice, sporty, comfortable seats in it. Uh, I like the contrasting black seat belts, carpet and trim, the way the red works in the door panels, this bird's eye maple is lovely wood for it. Uh, you get these great little compartments here, again, for more weapons or whatever you want to stuff in there. Little leather wrap on it. You got side airbags and front airbags and head airbags and airbags everywhere. Uh, you know, for a sporting car, this is quite a luxury steering wheel, but still works and looks nice. Uh, they are orthopedic seats, so they have the massage and the dynamics and all that stuff. Let's hop in, fire this thing up. All right, so again, foot on the brake, tap that guy. Car comes to life with a nice rumble, very cool self-test from the instrument cluster. Uh, over here, we've got our seat controls. You got your memory, your 52-way power seats. You've got your heating, your cooling, and of course, the uh, heat scarf. Uh, here's automatic headlights with washers. Uh, those are, of course, Xenons. Uh, beautiful leather wrap on the dashboard, uh, gorgeous. 
Um, again, never been a big fan of this uh, weird little instrument cluster they have. It's, you know, designed to reduce glare and such, but I just think it's an odd design. It looks too much like the Sydney Opera House or some sort of strange crustacean eyes staring at you. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's fine, and I like it better wrapped in leather than the old... Um, uh, material they used to use. A uh, little temp gauge off to the left, your fuel gauge to the right, you got your 160 mile an hour speedo and your, uh, uh, you know, a little bit over six grand red line on that uh, big V8. Uh, you also get a driver information center underneath the, uh, you know, these two little digital displays you can go through your Bluetooth, your trip odometer, change your settings, your compass, nav, radio, that sort of thing. Beautiful steering wheel, very subdued little tiny airbag, uh, lovely wood, even though it feels a little bit out of place in the car, it's lovely. Uh, you get paddle shifters here if you want to bang your way through the gears, uh, your uh, Bluetooth phone controls. You get my seatbelt on. Okay, over there you've got a very traditional looking clock that could be a, I don't know, clock on a Honda Accord, uh, but it's fine. You've got your lock and unlock buttons, which mystifyingly to me are, you know, separated from each other by the hazard thing. I feel they should be next to each other. Uh, these are all your vent controls. You've got Mercedes-Benz command unit, cockpit management and data system. Uh, you can have an SD card. It has an in-dash CD changer. Uh, this is, of course, your nav screen. You got your Bluetooth, uh, your discs, you know, whatever. You can go through all that stuff. The radio, I'm pretty sure we have satellite. It's, uh, yeah, satellite, memory, card, music, reel, whatever you need, it's all there. Um, good sounding radio, too. Uh, we got the 80s going, great. Uh, you got some cup holders that pop out, they still work, they're nice. They'll hold a Dunkin' Donuts coffee with no problem. Uh, your dual side climate control, uh, all a little bit updated for this year, but the same basic design. Uh, this very lovely, you know, leather shifter. Again, I do miss the old gated shifters on the Mercedes, but it's fine. Uh, electronic stability program off, that's your traction control. Uh, you've got manual sport and comfort setting for the uh, uh, transmission, suspension, engine, that sort of thing. Actually, just the just the engine and tranny setting there. Uh, this will turn off your uh, Parktronic if the beeping's making you nuts. You're in a drive-through or something. Uh, this is it would be aromatic on. Uh, an S-Class, but of course uh, it's hydro-pneumatic with the ABC Sport. Uh, but anyway, if you press this once, it's going to lift the vehicle uh, hydro-pneumatically to give you a little bit more ground clearance. You press it twice, we're going to go way up. So again, let me hop out and show you that. All of a sudden we've got enough ground clearance to get over a cadaver in the road. Yeah, look at that. Absolutely crazy. So. Uh, don't drive around like that. You'll look kind of silly. The car's sitting too high. But if you're uh, trying to, you know, fjord a river or get over some pretty high stuff, that's going to help you out. When I have these cars transported, I automatically put it on that setting to make it easier to get on and off the truck without scraping everything. And my seat bump back on. Okay, so then let's get that back to the normal ride height. Here's your mirrors um, where you can adjust them. Uh, ABC Sport, I've gone into that before. Uh, that's the um, uh, very advanced uh, system. It replaces traditional coil springs and sway bars and that sort of thing and uses instead high pressure fluid to dampen the car independently on each corner. So uh, depending how the car is running around, it's going to pump up any one of the shocks front, rear, sides to keep the body straight and level. Fantastic system. Uh, over here you push that guy, you get your glove box, it's air conditioned if you want to keep a tuna salad sandwich in there and a nice set of books and all very leather wrapped. Uh, I'm going to get the top back up so it's not windy. When I press the button you see it automatically lowers that roll bar for me. Up come all these panels, up comes the hard top. Bolts very nicely into place. And <laughs> it brings the bar back up in case you want to run it that way. It remembers that you had it up before. Okay, and now I'm going to put that back down using my little manual button.
Uh, one thing I'm not a big fan of, for whatever reason, they stopped running the windows with the top. So you have to do that yourself manually. You only get two switches and you have four windows. So you put it up once and it's the front. Put it up twice and it's the back. Let's go for a spin. So, you know, every SL harkens to be a sports car or, you know, tries to be. Going back to that original 300 SL Gullwing that uh, of course was so iconic and was basically just a lightweight Le Mans car that they ran on the streets. Uh, and that you could say was a true sports car. Uh, ever since then, SLs really haven't been, uh, particularly until the 230 came out, uh, which really did try, you know, but a big heavy thing, you know, you can't say it's anything like a Miata or a Boxster as far as flinging it around. Uh, the thing weighs a ton. But uh, this generation did manage to bring a hell of a lot more sporty performance than prior ones. So it can truly be called a sports car, uh, maybe in the same way that a Corvette is. You know, big front engine, V8, rear drive, torquey, you know, hammer the throttle kind of thing. And uh, I bet this would be fun on a racetrack. Let's get our sport suspension on. I turn off the traction control, but it really does nothing. Uh, meaning the minute that you start having fun, it just kicks itself back on. Pretty obnoxious, having German nannies around. Got the traffic this morning. Actually, I think I can sneak out into this lane while nobody's looking, so let's do that. So that was about quarter throttle and it, you know, it tucked my head back. I mean, this car is quick. Listen to this eight. I'm going to hammer it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can start to bend the time space universe in this thing. It is the ultimate mode of transportation on the Autobahn. I mean, if you want to get your German orthodontist to work at 150, uh, this is the car to do it with. And I mean, the steering is like laser precise. It just goes where you point it. The feel is terrific. Oh God, the response from the engine. Yeah, you know what? I mean, this is a bad to the bone car to drive around. I could get a lot of speeding tickets in this thing. Oh, that was a nice way to start the morning. So anyway, there it is, 2009 Mercedes-Benz SL550 Roadster. Again, the R230 chassis, the facelifted version uh, with the big engine. Lovely driving car. Uh, 42,000 miles on this one. Black and red, nice combo, nice options. Uh, come get it. You're going to love this thing. 239-298-8000 on the web at aenaples.com. Thank you so much for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.